Greetings fellow technophiles, my name is Nathan House. In this video we're going to explore phishing attacks, how phishing attacks are performed and why they are so gosh darn effective in hacking your granny and everyone else. And we'll also sprinkle in a little bit of discussion on smishing and vishing. Check out the comments below for references and links discussed in the video. Phishing is a type of attack that typically attempts to trick the victim into clicking on a link or executing malware in some way. It can be an attempt to compromise a device to steal sensitive information, passwords, usernames, pins, credit card numbers, as well as try to gain access to online accounts. Pretty much all of the things you don't want to happen can happen through phishing attacks. And phishing is one of the most successful and common types of attacks because it is easy to perform, cheap to set up, and it yields good returns for the attackers. So you really have to watch for it. In working for big corporations, even with repeated security training to wise people up, no matter what the company I've consulted to, about 30% or so of people continue to be fooled and click on things that they shouldn't. And funnily enough, some countries are worse clickers and some are better clickers on a consistent basis. But no matter what, people just seem to not be able to be trained out of not clicking on the things that they shouldn't click on. Phishing is typically carried out by sending fake emails or instant messages as well that direct the victim to a fake site um, that often resembles the legitimate site. It is a form of social engineering, or in other words, it's an attack against human weaknesses. And it relies also on the lack of defenses that web technologies inherently have uh, in order to do the attack. So for example, email does not authenticate or digitally sign the sender. So there's no guarantee of who it's come from. If there was, then this problem would be reduced. Because emails can be easily spoofed to look like they've come from a legitimate source, phishing attacks take advantage of that trust that you believe it's come from that person, or at least it can do. Generally, phishing attacks are done en masse, so they send out thousands or millions of emails, and those email addresses have been harvested from the internet, or sometimes they've been harvested through hacking websites, sometimes from the fact that people have publicly disclosed them on forums or other things like that, and even from guessing at what the address is. So if you, for example, had, you know, John at a domain name, you know, John at Hotmail or something like that, this would be an unusable account because of the amount of spam and phishing emails that it would get because spammers target common names in combination with domain names. You do also get mass email attacks on certain businesses as well. But if it is a specific and targeted attack, we call that spear phishing, um, if you're targeted individually. Let's look at some techniques used to perform phishing attacks in order to try and convince people to click on them. So the big one that they use is what's called link manipulation. This is a simple phishing email that you can see here in front of you that I put together. Uh, I've sent it to uh, a ghost mail account to illustrate the techniques that are used. Here, I'm faking links to uh, Google and to Microsoft. So if we just zoom in here. So the first technique that they use is subdomains and misspelt domains. Now, if you look at these three examples here, so you can see here that this is the real domain, and this is the domain it's trying to convince you that it's actually from and a slightly different technique being used here so that is obviously the real domain and then this is using subdirectories in order to look like Google this one's using a subdomain this one's using subdirectories 
and this one Microsoft can you notice what's wrong with that one you probably can because we're zoomed in which is here we've got an R and an N instead of an M let's have a look at some other examples so these are live phishing links that are right now attempting to convince people to click on them so you can see here this is um, this is actually an Australian bank and uh, it's attempting to convince people that you know this uh, is the domain when in actual fact we can see here that this is the real domain let's see if there's any other clever ones or well they're not really that clever but let's see if we can find any other examples so you can see here here's another <laughs> paypal.co.uk so the real domain the real domain is this so it may be tricky to understand as I've gone through this which which are the real domains depending on on your experience so the real domain is the one that is to the left of the high level domain that's the high level domain and that has no slash to the left of it high level domains are you know things like .com .net .org when we say that there is no slash to the left of it, this does not include the slash in the HTTP colon slash slash. If you look at my example here, that isn't legitimate because it has a slash to the left of it, which means it is a subdirectory. The real domain is the one to the left of the high level domain and that has no slash to the left. So that has a slash to the left. So it must be this one. The next sort of technique of link manipulation is what's called IDN homographic attack. IDN is the um, internationalized uh, domain name standard. So you can see a couple of obvious ones, but again, they're not always obvious. So you can see here we've got some zeros instead of O's. And we've got an L instead of a one. But let me tell you that if the font is different, these can be almost impossible to see the difference. And obviously this can be used in combination with subdomains and misspelling in order to create further confusion. And another one is hidden URLs. So using HTML A tags to hide the real URL. So you can see here we've got click here so you don't know what's behind it. But if you look down there at the bottom, you can see that it's going to google.com.stationx.net. And this one we can see is actually going to google.com.stationx.net so not at all going to where it alleges to go to so I click there you see don't go to Google at all obviously I could this could have been you know an attack site so the way these work these hidden URLs is essentially it's just HTML it's, it's really really not complicated at all um, so you can see here these um, but this is the uh, raw HTML here um, that has created these links that I sent in the email. Email is made up of HTML nowadays anyway. It's, it's text and HTML and the email clients render the HTML just like browsers render HTML. So you can see here what I have is I, I've represented google.com as what you can see in the email but actually the real link is here. And of course, if we, you know, use all of these in combination, you know, this is why people click on the links because they, they can be fooled. It, it, it's, it's easy to see why people get fooled. I mean, there's all sorts of nonsense in here that your lay person is just not going to understand and they are going to click on them. Now, if we go back to the email, if we hover over the email, we can right click and copy link location. Now, depending on your browser, that may reveal the correct URL, but not always. JavaScript could hide the link pending on your email client. And also, as I showed here, you can hover over and you can see in the bottom left, um, the real domain. That isn't always going to be the case either. Depending on your email client and JavaScript, that may also be faked as well. So it is pretty tricky. You can look at the HTML 
like here. Some email clients will allow you to see the raw HTML and then you can go through and see what's there, but some won't. I mean, this ghost mail, for example, does not let me look at the raw email. So I, I have to hover over it to see where it is going to take me to. Good providers, and this can be both a good and a bad thing, will notice these types of things and will change them. So Thunderbird, for example, um, these uh, wouldn't come through like this. Um, it would change them so that you can actually see where it's going to. But that defense mechanism could be bypassed as well. So, you know, so it's not foolproof. Um, but Ghostmail in this example was able to receive these and make them look like this without me going to much effort to try to bypass any phishing protection that it has. Other than URL manipulation, there's also covert URL redirects that use vulnerabilities such as cross-site scripting and cross-site request forgery, or they can be used in combination with URL manipulation. So it is possible that you might get sent a link to a real site and the real site is being manipulated to attack you in some way. So the attacker can or possibly has found a flaw in the real site and is using a technique like open redirect or as I've just mentioned the cross-site scripting and the cross-site request forgery vulnerabilities in order to attack you. So this has happened to PayPal and many others. So let me give you an example because this, you know, obviously won't be clear of a reflected cross-site scripting vulnerability that could be used in a phishing attack. So imagine you've been, uh, you know, sent a link via uh, whatever means. Now, this was actually a cross-site scripting vulnerability that I found in a forum application, so I'm just using it as an example. So this is, is an example of the URL. You then click on this URL this takes you to the website and then because I have inserted into that URL a special script when you enter your username and password I'm able to steal your username and password now if you look here this is the crucial bit of uh, code so I've inserted my own little bit of code here this is the reflected cross-site scripting vulnerability. That site should not let me put in my own scripts into URLs and process it because what that means is that I am then able to act as that website under the security context of that website, which means I then have access to your cookies and of course I can manipulate the web page so that it you know, that it's not the right login screen and it's actually a fake login screen that I've presented. And that's actually what I did with this particular uh, vulnerability to demonstrate it to the um, people that own the application so that they could fix it. So that was the actual URL vulnerability. And if you look here, there I'm inserting in a special, what's called an iframe in order to put up a, a fake login screen and able to take the usernames and passwords. So that gives you an example there. If there's vulnerabilities in the website, these cross-site scripting vulnerabilities, these open redirects, then the phishing attacks can be even worse. And to finish up on phishing, there's a couple of variants of phishing and that is vishing and smishing. So vishing is phone or voice phishing and smishing is SMS phishing or sending text messages. So this is attempting to call or text you in an attempt to compromise your device in the same way as you do with phishing, you know, so steal sensitive information, password, usernames, credit cards, you know, all of the bad stuff. There are many examples, a common one being pretending to be from Microsoft, telling you that you have a virus on your machine, 
can they help? Please download and install this totally legitimate software, which is then, you know, a Trojan or something like that. Again, my mother has had a couple of these calls from uh, guys from India pretending to be from Microsoft. These calls do work on enough people. That's why they continue to do them. And actually, if you look on YouTube, you can actually see a lot of people uh, pranking these people <laughs> when they're being called by them. Um, so those are quite funny to watch. So vishing is phone-based cons. Smishing is text-based cons. What has been your experience with phishing? Have you been a victim? Do you get sent lots of dodgy emails every day? Have you tried stopping phishing attacks at work or at home? Let me know in the comments below. I'd be very interested to hear your experiences. If you have any suggestions for topics you would like me to cover, then please make a suggestion. I'd love to hear back from you. If you want access to our full online courses on cybersecurity and hacking, Check out the link below where we cover in detail on our courses, defenses to phishing attacks and much, much more. You also find a special discount coupon just for YouTubers below. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you want more weekly cybersecurity updates.